There's only one thing to do in the most epic platformer bug 2019. I died. Cause I'm awful. Welcome back to another Steam Free to Play review, and today the game we'll be focusing on is Surge, which is a game that's made by the same gaming college in Quebec, Canada that made Lights Out. It's very similar as in playstyle. It's a 2D platformer with a 3D backdrop and 3D characters, but it has some new mechanics. Well, not new mechanics that came out first, but different mechanics, and it has some things that I believe they could have kept that I liked about this game, and then there were some, some things that they approved upon. So basically, we're going to be focusing on mainly those differences throughout the video. So this game has two endings like Lights Out, and I'll be showing them at the end of the video after the view if you're interested in that. If you're not, skip the end of the video. And I found out that Lights Out had two endings thanks to somebody commenting and actually telling me because I didn't do it correctly to get to the two endings. This one kind of made it easier and you just kind of pick which ending you want and then you can restart and pick it again. So this is the main feature of the game. It's a grappling hook. I'm not the biggest fan of it because it kind of felt like it took away some of the like free-flowing control from the game that I plotted Lights Out for. The ground control is pretty neat for a platformer because you can hold the left trigger button and actually aim your gun. It'll make you like stand there and you can aim. As you can tell by me like Chris Colling these bad guys. I would definitely recommend that you have a controller to play this game. Unlike the uh, lights out where you can actually do it with the keyboard, I just had to hook in a controller because the grappling hook is kind of hard to use even with the controller, so I can imagine doing it without it. So in this, unlike lights out, this has like a lot more cutscenes, like almost every main terminal in an area has a flashback that will tell you a little bit more about Lazarus' past. There's also a hidden Wally scene in there where he's thinking about calling the lady a Eve. I think that was a Wally reference, and I thought that was pretty cool. Wally's a good movie. So once you pull the lever at the end of the first area, these orbs pop up and they kind of show you what you're supposed to do for the boss fight. You gotta hit him with the hook to actually like get rid of him. And this is something I wish they would have kept into Lights Out. I think it would have been a really neat thing as a boss fight. Even though in this game all the boss fights are kind of the same and none of them are like super difficult, it's still a really neat thing to have. It gives you like a more challenging feel to the game even though the boss fight is probably the easiest part of this game because unlike Lights Out, this is a pretty unforgiving game with the, the hook mechanic and other things. Also that door in the back, you have to charge up and break which is a power up you get later in the game so there's a lot of backtracking if you want to get all the unlockables in this game. Like a lot of backtracking, I did not even get close to getting all the unlockables at all. And the boss actually upgrades as you go on, so I just thought that was a really neat thing that they had in this game. So this is a shop where you can spend your coins you pick up throughout the game, which is a neat idea, but I never found the VR blueprint missions, so I never got to buy any of them, so you can beat the game without them. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say my collection will never be complete? Wouldn't you say I'm the guy, the guy who has none of the things <laughs> so there's it's good that there's a lot of collectibles but some of them I don't even know if you can get to I tried really hard and there were some that I saw that I just could not figure out how it was even possible to get to them so to show you some of the like harder things in this game this jump is so hard I didn't know you could get a little bit farther by dashing for the longest time it took me over to figure it out I don't know if they wanted me the longer sideways jump upgrade before I got here before I could go through this because it's one of the starting areas but it took me so many times to get to this thing and I don't even know what the item does I don't even think it was like a memory kind of story thing I don't know what it was I don't know if it makes a blueprint but oh my gosh this is the next area that brain boggled me pretty bad because you have to be really quick in your timing. There's a lot of parts like this. I played pretty hard games like the Sands boss fight in Undertale, which is a bullet hell. It kind of has platforming elements, so definitely that boss fight in the genocide run. And I beat Cuphead on like the hardest difficulty that you can start with. And some of the jumps in this game are really seem to be frame perfect. And this part. Oh my gosh, it took me so many tries to figure out what I was supposed to do. Because one, it takes really good timing. Two, well the main thing is that it takes really good timing. But two, that you gotta like, kinda get lucky. Because if you don't wait till you get low enough on that, you will run into the bomb and not make it. But you'd think I'd be done with this area, right, after I get through it one time? No. Because I'm, there's another way to go this way. And guess where this leads? 
This leads back to the same spot. Which, granted, at least I know what to do this time. Like, I had already, like, thought it out and did it once. But it still took me multiple tries to get through this. Which is, it's not always, it's not necessarily a bad thing that's hard, but the fact that it's hard sometimes because the grappling hook doesn't go the way I want it to, but this game did give me that, like, sense relief you get when you beat a harder game, so that's always a feel-good kind of moment when I actually beat it. Spooder man, Spooder man, does whatever a Spooder can. Spooder man, no! Alright, let's try this again. This time it's for real. I'm getting the gold. Go, Spooder man, go! Run, Sp That didn't touch me. That didn't touch me at all. Alright, one more time. Let's see if we can get it. Alright, moving on! <laughs> let's see what we can do now. We're just gonna leave this area. That chest is obviously a trap. I can't even use the coins. <laughs> oh god! So this shield dude was the bane of my existence because for the longest time I didn't know you could steal their shields with the grappling hook and this dude right here if you come from this way will stick you in those pipes every time and you will be stuck. But this game auto saves, thank god. That's something I love about this game that I did not like about Lights Out. It auto saves so I didn't lose any progress even though he stuck me up there. So you have to slide and steal this guy's shield at the same time. So if, if you keep getting stuck, that's what you gotta do. You gotta slide and steal. It's kinda like baseball. But this is the most beautiful scene in the game to me because it's like the open world look at all the dystopia future kind of thing that's going on. And I love it when they stick to the open world kind of settings in the background. It looks so good. So this game gets a 7 out of 10 compared to Lights Out 7.5 out of 10 because you can really tell they polished the gameplay and it felt felt like a more fluid platformer even though I really do enjoy some of the increased difficulty at some points it got really frustrated to try to work with that grappling hook and there were things they did well like the cutscenes I really enjoyed that the boss fights was a really good idea that I wish they kinda would have kept but Lights Out just felt so much free flowing which is like like I said the most important thing to a platformer in my opinion the game is pretty unforgiving too it doesn't really tell you where to go where like and lights out I kinda I had an idea and I could actually figure out where to go and I did I, one of the main challenges of the game wasn't figuring out where to go like I didn't get lost like I did in this game there's not very much direction if I like that they put a map in your inventory but they should have put like a more detailed map that kinda shows the world if they that's just something that I would have appreciated having because I kinda struggled trying to find my way around but still a really great game. If you are looking for like a fun free to play platformer, I would play this and Lights Out. They were both like the two games, best games I've played so far on the Steam free to play show. But as always, please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye!